Hello, gorgeous. This is the Shira Pure Mango Butter Mask. And uh, this is a sample that my friend Ginger sent me uh, that I showed you in a little gift video a couple months ago. And uh, I'm feeling very dry right now. So this seemed to be a good one to do tonight. Uh, thank you so much for your kind responses to the video I put up two weeks ago uh, about the house I grew up in. Um, it occurred me, to me that I do have a little more to say about that, so this is sort of part two, and I hope I don't bore you to death. But um, I, I, I've been doing a lot of organizing around here, and I found some more pictures, and it brought a few more stories to mind. So I'm going to uh, elaborate in some cases and fill in the gaps in some others. Uh, first of all, I found some more photos of the house that is more as it looked when I lived there. You know, in the first one, you know, I don't know, you could tell, but the upper part of the house seemed to be painted, I'm guessing, evergreen. And uh, during my lifetime, it was painted white. So this is a photo that is far more representative of how things looked when I lived there. Um, my mother was a big, big fan of uh, gardening. And all across the uh, front porch, she had pot plants, mainly succulents. And I love this picture because you can see her there with some of her pot plants. And also what's growing up in front of her, that's oleanders, which are highly toxic. Uh, you don't want to get any oleander in your mouth, but they're awfully beautiful. And they're very common to Houston and Galveston. And... I know a lot of people wouldn't want to do this, but it looks to me, I, I can't quite tell. Is she cleaning the windows? Is she cleaning the screen? I don't know. I wouldn't want to be her in that photo, but I thought that was interesting. Um, and then I found this other picture. I love this uh, because this is a picture of Joe, and you kind of can see the garage. The garage is like three little sheds, but where I'm pointing, that's um, the garage apartment where Joe lived. And that Spaniel, my understanding is his name was Boy, and he didn't take too kindly to me uh, coming along, and so I think they sold Boy or something. I love Cocker Spaniels. That makes me so sad. But anyway, yeah, that was Joe's apartment over there. And the other thing I forgot to mention, when Joe really and truly retired and went to visit his daughter, I mean, move with his daughter, she kind of had a little... I guess it was an efficiency, turned like a back area of her house into an efficiency apartment. And so he was like in the house, but kind of separated. And, uh, you know, so he could have some privacy, I assume. But uh, after he moved, his apartment was used primarily for uh, any time a dog was having puppies or a cat was having kittens. They gave birth in, in Joe's living room. <laughs> and also, my father, uh, I've mentioned, was a police officer, and police officers, I think, get first dibs on things at police auctions, and he bought a slot machine, uh, a one-arm bandit that had been confiscated, I believe, in Galveston uh, back during Prohibition. I mean, this was like an Art Deco-looking one-arm bandit, so he bought this, and my girlfriends would come over to play, and what he'd do is he'd take the key and open up the back of it and take out all the nickels and disperse them between my girlfriends and I and we'd sit there and ding, hoping to come up three cherries and uh, at the end we'd all have to turn our uh, money back into him but it was it was a lot of fun nevertheless okay this picture is very grainy I have no idea who it is but I've kept it because it's one of only two photos I have of the back door of apartment one. And those stairs that you see over here are leading up to the back door of apartment four. Okay, I found um, two more photos of uh, the visit to, to Brenham to see Barney and Guard. And I also remembered something else about Guard that I didn't tell you. But this is, uh, I love this picture of me with Barney. And then this is with Mama and Guard and Ayeen and myself. 
Oh, I hope this is focusing. I think that's probably a little better. Uh, but um, Bianca watched the video, Guard's granddaughter, and commented that um, what happened, and I, you know, I was a kid, I didn't remember this, but what happened is that, uh, I mean, I think she was going to retire and move back to Brenham, you know, but Barney died. And that was just so, you know, upsetting that I guess at that point in time she retired and moved back early or something. Um, but also I'd forgotten to tell you that she had a pet turtle um, that she kept by the front window. Uh, it was on a little table in a glass jar, I mean bowl, about that big around. And it had water in there and, you know, some kind of rock formation. And I uh, got to feed him lettuce. And uh, that may account for my fondness for turtles, which you don't know, but a lot of my face friends know because I'm always posting things about turtles. But anyway, that was neat. Okay, um, I'm, I'm showing you this to uh, tell you about a couple of the neighbors because they meant a lot to me. This is uh, my mother with a couple of kids. I can't tell without my glasses, but this house right here, this red brick house directly across the street, Mrs. E.T. lived there, spelled E-T-I-E. And she was, I guess to me at that age, everybody was an older lady, but she was an older lady and um, she put glitter on greeting cards. You know how back in the late 50s, early 60s, you know, you'd have a Christmas card that was like, um, let's say, a scene of a church with snow in the front of the church, and then across the top of the church, I mean, uh, yeah, on the top of the church and across the snow, there would be a dusting of white glitter. Well, that's it. She'd receive all these boxes of um, greeting cards, and she would apply the great glitter and send it back. And uh, the other really cool thing about Miss E.T. is she had um, also had an efficiency apartment in the back of her house. And a lady lived there named Elizabeth Frick. And when I was in seventh grade, I was very into uh, writing poetry. And as it turns out, Miss Frick was a published poet. And so I would uh, go hang out with her. And um, I guess my mother was thought that I was really annoying her because she would have me, um, you know, she'd go get me and make me come home. I don't think I really was. I think uh, Miss Frick enjoyed the attention, but I still have two poetry journals, some sort of official state of Texas poetry journals with her poetry in there um, autographed and inscribed to me. <laughs> okay, this next house, right uh, directly across the street, this was, you know, since my house was like a wide house, there were two houses across the street of it. From it. We sat on two lots, in other words. So directly across the street was the Peters. And I don't remember anything about the Peters except for the fact that um, once when I tried to run away, um, I saw Miss Peters across the street and I asked her, um, if she could help me cross the street because I was running away, but I wasn't allowed to cross the street by myself. Anyway, Miss Peters ratted me out and I didn't run away. So here's another picture of Binky. And that's the Peters house again. But right over here is where the Isaacs lived. Um, the Isaacs were uh, deaf. Both husband and wife were deaf. And um, they had a handsome young son named Levy, Levy Isaacs. Anyway, sometimes I would have to take uh, messages uh, from my mother to the Isaacs house for some reason or another, neighborhood stuff, I guess. And uh, I'd go over and ring their doorbell, and that would have a light inside flash off and on. And, you know, Mrs. Isaacs would then come to the door and get whatever message it was. But the coolest thing happened. Uh, when I was at University of Texas, uh, my father at some point apparently had bought an IRA in my name and I had to take the bus out to some bank to sign this IRA. And I saw, uh, I walked into the bank and I noticed the teller had um, 
a name tag on that said Levy Isaacs and that was so extraordinary I had to ask and it was my Levy Isaacs and uh, his parents he said were still alive and well I just thought that was the coolest thing because that would have been you know 10 or 12 years after I'd seen him you know. hi I'm coming back later to interject something I forgot to say um, <clears throat> the house to the left of the Isaacs house um, my Aunt Melly and my Aunt Lily lived there and those would have been uh, Grandma Potter's sisters and they were very old ladies and very frail and I remember one time um, I think it was Aunt Melly the younger of the two falling getting out of the bathtub and I think after right after that they were put into uh, a nursing home and the house was sold and uh, a family moved in named the Nations. They had a son named Art Nations and uh, I had a huge crush on Art but he did nothing but make my life miserable. Guys, you can't live them with them. You can't live without them. Can you? Uh, I want to say another thing about apartment 5 where Mrs. Carpenter lived. Um, apparently before Mrs. Carpenter lived there uh, the Wood Allens lived there. Uh, Allen and Francis Wood Allen. He was called Pappy. And um, later they moved, but they still went to church with us and they became my godparents. So here is a picture of every time they went on to on vacation, they'd bring you back weird stuff. In this case, it looks like it was a hat. But anyway, that's Francis and Pappy Wood Allen. And check out that mid-century modern coffee table and sofa. Isn't that cool? And uh, here's a picture of my christening. I'm going to try to go around and tell you who everybody is. Okay, so that's Grandma Potter. And without my glasses on, this is going to be, yeah. Okay, so there's my godmother, Frances. And there's my godfather, Pappy. And there's my priest, Father Dobert. And there's Daddy holding me. And there's my mother. And back here, that's my mother's mother, who I called Nanny. And there's my mother's stepfather, who I called Paul. And then finally, there's Hildegard Barnett. My priest, his name was Scardon Dobert, and he was from New Orleans. And after he retired, he went back to New Orleans for a bit, and then he went to South America to work with lepers, I believe. And then the other thing about the Wood Allens is they had two or three kids, I believe, but uh, most notably in my case was June. Uh, and this is a picture of June. And June passed away when she was 13. She had appendicitis. Anyway, June was much beloved by my father and I never quite lived up to her. I don't know why, you know, I was told Oh, your daddy loved June. Oh, your daddy loved June. And I never quite felt like my daddy loved me, but he sure loved June. I wish June hadn't died. Um, I think her parents were devastated. I think my father was devastated and, and I missed out on knowing her. She was a legend in my life. Um, I have two more pictures I'd like to show you of uh, the Jones family. I have to show you this picture of Corrine and I because it's my favorite picture. I don't know what I was so peeved about. Maybe that we had matching dress, dresses made for us, but right now, I mean, as an adult, I look back on that and I love that we had matching dresses. And, um, I mentioned uh, Kim, their mother, who was um, a Japanese American from Hawaii. And this is a picture of Kim with Albert Jr. 
Let's see. It says that this is 1975, that Kim was 36, and Elbert Jr. was 14. And uh, Corrine watched the video and commented. And um, I have a couple memories to share, especially about Corrine and I. Um, a little glass of drink of Moogie Chaw, excuse me. Um, after the last person who lived in apartment four moved out, and by the way, the last person who lived there, her name was Marge, and she worked at the Sumburger, uh, which was this tiny little building that one person stood in and made hamburgers and fries and drinks. But Marge moved closer to the Sumburger, and about once every two months, we'd go have Sumburgers after that. But anyway, after Marge moved out of apartment four, uh, that I, that was allowed to be my playroom. And uh, that's where Corrine and I played Beatles records. And we had, I don't know if those of you who grew up at the same period of time, you would have decorative bottles filled with water that you put food colors in, and you'd put those in the windows as decoration and on sunny days. I can't tell you how a simple thing like that made a room so beautiful. Uh, but we listened to Beatles records and uh, we actually wore out a 45 RPM of MacArthur Park by Richard Harris. And also I remember that I had a couple posters on the wall that I personally made on poster board uh, listening, listing all the Greek and Roman gods and goddesses. I was very into mythology at that age, so I'd have like their name and what they were the god of. Um, another thing that Corey and I would do for fun, <laughs> did I mention this, is that, I might have mentioned this, but my uncle would take us for walks in Hollywood Cemetery. Um, I didn't have any relatives buried there, but uh, it was a pleasant place to walk, and I still love walking through cemeteries. Um, and so I think that's it for this week. I just wanted to give you, oh no, there's one more thing. Sorry. And I, unfortunately in this case, I don't have a photo, but before a guard lived in apartment three, a gentleman named Rector, R-E-C-T-O-R, -E Mason lived there. And apparently he was an older gentleman. I don't know where the rest of his family was. I do know he was originally from St. Joseph, Missouri. And my mother often would comment, I loved that old man. I loved that old man to the point that I got the impression maybe she had a crush on him. So I don't know if he died while he lived at our house or if he moved away and left belongings behind because somewhere I have a lot of his personal photos and I also have a bunch of, I mean, a box of love, love letters he wrote to his wife. So, um, I hope I can find those photos one day because he was very dapper and I would love you to see him. Okay. I'm going to go wash this off and I'll be right back. Hi, I'm back. Uh, okay, this is super hydrating and super moisturizing and cruelty free. And Ginger speaks highly of it. And the website is Shura.com. And I would totally consider buying some of this almost to the exclusion of everything else. I don't think I've ever felt quite so plump and moisturized. Okay, so that's it. I hope this wasn't too redundant. Um, hopefully next week I will move on to something different. Anyway, I love y'all. Bye.